Three. Welcome everybody back to Spy Fox and Hold the Mustard. We might be on the last world of the game. I know I've said this at least once or twice before in this stream, but this time I mean it because we're in space and it sounds like this is leading up to the final battle against Keen Conglomerate. Oh, and now we get different music. We got Saturn in the background here. Oh yeah. So this looks like it's one of those horde battles where there's just a bunch of ships that are all spawned in at the beginning, and they're all just moving towards you, and we've got to just blast them all out. I like this kind of mission. It's a lot more dangerous, but that makes it a little bit more interesting, and hopefully it means it won't last quite as long. I have a feeling the satellites are going to count as uh, solid objects, though. So i got to ask people... If you were given the option to go into outer space, would you? Because my answer is definitely not. I do not want to go into outer space. <laughs> for one, the, the launch into outer space would be a lot for your body to handle. But also, man, like, the fear of, like, oh, what happens if something goes wrong? It would be, it would be a little too great. Plus, I like Earth. I like having atmosphere and easy access to water. And sunlight. There we go. Okay, yeah, I can dig these levels. No fuel recharges, though. That's okay. Oh, hey, we didn't even get a score counter. Okay, the moon actually is part of the background. That's good. Is that part of the background? Oh, yeah, that is too. Cool. That's actually good. To genuinely good to know. I remember even going to, the, like, Kennedy Space Center when we went on vacations in Florida. They would have, like, motion simulators where they're like, this, like, somewhat simulates, like, a fraction of the G-forces that you would experience uh, when you go into outer space. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. That looks too intense. I mean, the bragging rights of being able to be like, oh, yeah, I've been to outer space. Like, that would be really cool. And that's, like, such a great conversation starter or, like, icebreaker at a party. Just be like, yeah, I've been to outer space. Like, that would be pretty cool, but I don't think I would go for that. <laughs> yeah, er Earth was literally created for us. <laughs> Wanting to go into outer space because you want to go someplace that, like, is better than Earth, that's kind of like trying to get milk from almonds instead of, like, you know, one of the many, many animals we have that can give us milk. <laughs> You could go to outer space, maybe? Again, this is assuming, like... This is assuming you don't have to, like, pay for any of it. Just like, hey, if, like, we're... Oh, we, oh, oh that's bad. It's more just like, hey, we want to send you into outer space, if you're willing. Like, we'll pay for everything, we'll give you all the training you need. It's literally just like, would you get on the rocket and go into outer space? And I'm like, I can't even handle intense roller coasters, so I think I'm out. <laughs> the, re the real downside is you would have to wear a diaper. That That's a no-go for me. It's like, there's, there's some things I don't, like, I don't have any desire to go into a submarine either. Although, I'll be honest, I think I'd rather go into space than into a submarine. Submarine just sounds claustrophobic beyond belief. And also, I feel like I would rather be in a spaceship that gets, like, blown up than a submarine that gets blown up. Maybe that's an unpopular decision. Ow! Okay, that is not part of the back. That, that is not part of the background. That is an actual physical thing. <laughs> I, I, beg, I guess being flown into the ocean and being flown into outer space would probably be pretty similar. You can't breathe in either of them. You can't really see in either of them. Though I suppose if you get flown into the ocean, there's a chance something would eat you quickly. <laughs> I don't know. None of these seem very pleasant. I'm totally cool with air travel because, you know, people, we have a lot of experience with air travel and airplanes. It's very, very safe. And there are tons of special precautions of like, hey, if 
all of these things go wrong, we're not going to die. We've got, like, flotation devices, we have parachutes, we have oxygen masks, like, you've got a trained crew that will, like, take care of you. Like, it, you're good. That's true. But here's the thing, like, if you got flung into outer space in your spacesuit with nowhere to go, you would literally just wait and drift into nothingness with absolutely no chance of escape, and you would just slowly die. I think I'd rather... I would much rather have a quick death than that. <laughs> wow, this got really morbid. Let's change the topic to something a bit more interesting. <laughs> hey, CRK. Ah, hey, no worries. Backyard baseball was incredible today. Uh... I guess plug your ears for the next 10 seconds if you don't want spoilers, but uh, we played on Tin Can Alley, we scored 20 points to zero, and we got a perfect game. We shut them out entirely, they never reached first base. Spoilers over. Anyway, so, oh, come on. Ugh. Sometimes there are so many ships you just can't shoot rapidly enough. This is why I like the green laser in Faints from Space. It just kills everything. Well, thus far, the last several worlds have all been eight levels each. So I would assume there's probably eight levels in outer space as well. It's more like, is outer space the last world, or would it be like King Conglomerate Spaceship after that? Although, with how fast these levels are going by, we might be able to do all the rest of the levels, even if there are more after outer space. <laughs> the last world is just Dairy Queen. <laughs> you read my mind! <laughs> Boop, 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 boop. Outer space level 5. Really? It looked like he had identical stat points to Angela. Maybe that's a coincidence. Oh, how, how about this, folks? So, other than the job you have right now, like, something in a different field than what you're in now, what job would you get? So, like, right now, I'm in computer science. If I was not in computer science, I would probably end up doing something really, really different. Like, I might... <laughs> Part of me is like, you know, owning a farm could be pretty cool. Or, like, homesteading it. Or just being like, I'm gonna rough it in the wilderness on my own. I don't know. I've never... I've never really thought about... Because, like... <laughs> I've known I've wanted to do computer science literally since I was, like, 10 years old. And I've, like, I'm just, like, there's always going to be demand for that. So, like, I'm never going to be strapped for a job. So I've never really had to think about backups. But sometimes it's fun where I'm, like, oh, yeah, like, it could be fun to have a farm. It could be fun to, like, run a bakery. <laughs> Very, like, completely different level jobs, but... There are some jobs I would absolutely never do. Like, salesmen. I, there's no way I could be a salesman. Absolutely not. The thought of having to just call random people and try to sell them products that they're not looking for. Oh, sounds like torture. I, I have also learned... <laughs> so, uh, this Tuesday, my, I'm part of a men's group at my church. And there was a volunteer opportunity uh, that I went to instead. And, like, the men's group was like, yeah, like, we're not meeting, but, like, the church is doing this, like, service uh, opportunity. I'm like, yeah, sure, that's great. I want to I wanna spend more time serving. I didn't know at the time, but that was serving with the, like, special needs people, which is great. Like, our the church I'm part of has a pretty large uh, number of special needs kids and adults. And I'm like, it's great that we have this. And I also learned, I'm like, I'm not good at dealing with special needs people <laughs> it takes it takes a special person to be really good at it and i'm not it i'm okay but i spent most of the time just like i'll help pack this stuff up and move it to the office <laughs> i don't know i feel like it based on the needs special needs means there are special things that you have to do to like properly look out for them and my general strategy is I'm like, I just treat them like they're anybody else. 
which I think there's definitely a place for, but also I don't think you're going to be really great at it unless you know the challenges and like what each person needs. I'm, I'm just not... <laughs> I, ha I have a hard enough time socializing with neurotypical people. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's not just shoot the spaceship, there's a weak point somewhere. Well, it's my passion? I mean... My passion would be computers. I really like coding. And clearly, I really like games. <laughs> Although, I did learn a couple years back. I'm like, alright, I my dream job used to be making video games. Not anymore. Not anymore. Because I have learned, I'm like, oh, if you're in the gaming industry, uh, you work all the time, the pay's not even that great. Just like it's, I've learned it's not a great environment. Hey, hey, no worries about the loan messages. I can take a peek later. Ooh. Where are the... Oh, there you are. I'm like, there's... Where's this guy on the radar? Why was that being listed as above me? He was definitely below me. <laughs> I also think it's important to uh, remind people... Your passion doesn't have to be related to your work. Like, there, there's a lot of people where they're like, oh, just like, do if you do what you love for your job, then you'll never work a day in your life. I'm like, well, sometimes that can happen to people. Also, you run the risk of if you do it, if you do what you love for work, you'll lose, you won't love it anymore. Where is the weak point here? Ouch. Maybe. Ow! Where did that come from? Oh, wait a second. I see a glowing point at the bottom. I think we're going to run out of fuel on this level. I didn't think the radar... Okay, the radar on this level is maybe just a little bit wonky. Possibly. Almost out of fuel. Well, I'm... Okay. I did not move up, but all right then. <laughs> no, but what I was saying, I think probably the best thing, the best advice I can give people for a job is, is if you try to get a job that maybe you don't even necessarily need to like, but a job that you're like, you know, I could do this every day for a long time. And especially if it's a job where you've got you're working with people that you like, or at least are like these these people are chill. That makes a huge difference. Because like you could you could have a job where you're like I really like the work, but oh man, I cannot stand the people I work with. And that that can take a great job and make it unbearable. And likewise, you can have a job that's not necessarily all that great. Oh wow, we just blew open the hole. But if you like the people there, it makes it a lot better. Outer space level 8. Is this the last level? Or there's there more after this? This looks like the mothership of King Kong Bomber. Maybe we'll get another cutscene at the end. That would be pretty dope. Alright, let's move over towards the core. Again, I don't know. If I'm doing a blind playthrough, I don't know what lies in store. That's kind of the nature of a blind playthrough. If you can do what you love and still continue to love it even while it's your job, then that is fantastic. And I really admire people that have that. Level complete! Alright, our space level 8. Is there more? Time to put King Conglomerate under spy arrest. Never mind! Already on it, Looks like that's the end! You're already too late, Mr. Fox. All of your precious tomatoes have been loaded aboard this giant remote-controlled rocket. You'll notice that I have aimed it directly at a black hole. <laughs> it is my intention. That seems a little excessive. Remote-controlled rocket, you say? Yes, yes. Remote-controlled. Now, as I was saying, <clears throat> it is my intention to deprive the condiment marketplace of its tomatoes by launching the rocket into the black hole. 
without the tomatoes. Ketchup will not stand a chance against my mighty mustard empire. We caught him monologuing. Get him. Putting mustard on hamburgers and ice cream and hot dogs. Ice cream? You mean to say that your giant rocket is controlled by this remote control? Yes. <laughs> It's a remote-controlled rocket, controlled by that remote control. <laughs> Is the concept too hard for you to understand? Now please, would you let me finish? I'll begin with putting mustard... Oh no. <laughs> Oof. That actually might have killed him. Gotta sell them before they go bad. <laughs> Fanny Bears wanted? <laughs> Why? Did a good job putting King Conglomerate in spy jail, Fox. Thanks, Quack. It looks like we really made a monkey out of King Conglomerate. <laughs> <laughs> I know what the thumbnail's going to be. <laughs> okay, you know what? That end screen, it was worth playing the entire game just to get that. Wow. <laughs> We did. <laughs> what a weird freeze frame! <laughs> that's officially my favorite still frame in any humongous entertainment game, right there. That's ap that's actually fantastic, right there. <laughs> They're all just eating at the cafeteria like school for it. This, that's amazing. That, this is amazing. This is this is the best junior arcade game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I take it back. This is 100% better than G's Chase. <laughs> Just for that ending. <laughs> wow! Also, King Conglomerate just got buried by a literal, like, metric ton of tomatoes. I don't care if tomatoes are soft. I think that would kill him if he's a hamster. And then they're just laughing about it. Wow. <laughs> but seriously, we can't... You could just drag me with that. Why the heck is Fatty Bear on a wanted poster? He did nothing wrong. He literally made a, a birthday surprise. <laughs> Is it because he cheated in GoFish? He may he may have cheated in GoFish. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't believe it took me 27 years of my life to see this still image. This actual canon image of Spy Fox Quack and Monkey Betty right here. And that this is the final freeze frame. And it just stays on screen for you to appreciate it. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, no, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. Such a great game. So glad I played it through to the end. <laughs> All right then. Well, because we finished Spy Fox Hold the Mustard tonight, I might have to look at the... Uh, Hang on, let me pull up the calendar. Because we have one, two, we have three games left in the main backyard baseball series. Then we got the playoffs, which are a maximum of three games. Then we have the tournament, which is a max of three games. Then we've got the World Series, which is a max of five games, but realistically, it's not going to take that long. So we've got one, two. Okay, we've got five or six Mondays and Wednesdays. So if we do two games, you know. I think I might dial, but maybe I might. Hmm. I might cancel one of the either the Monday or the Friday stream, whichever would work. I might I might stop doing Monday streams if I'm doing Sunday streams. Hey. Um. Who said that? Was that Monkey Penny? Who <laughs> said hey? <laughs> okay. Yeah, the game was 20-0. No, I, th I think I will cease the Monday streams, because I think four streams a week is a little too much, and I'm confident we can finish the Backyard Baseball doing two games a stream until then. And if we have to do some extra games, that's how it's going to be. Anyway, so that was Spy Fox Hold the Mustard. Um, As far as the Junior Arcade games go, I would rank it higher than Water Worries and higher than Cheese Chase. I don't... I... Mm, I'd put it on par with Pajama Sam Lost and Found, I think. Lost and Found had a better gameplay, but this had better story, is what, I, is what I'll, I'll go with. The gameplay here was a little bit boring. It needed to be, it needed a new gimmick each world to shake things up a bit more. It was just very samey. But hey, I can't argue with that ending. That was, mm, 
That was that was fascinating. That was fantastic. So glad that I got to play this at last and share it with you all. Anyways, I'm gonna sign off there. Thanks for watching, everybody. So Sunday we will be playing Recoded again. That's going swimmingly. And then next time I stream this or back at baseball, it will be on Wednesday of next week. So I wish you all a fantastic rest of your night and God bless everybody. And if you do see Fatty Bear, please let me let me know. We're looking for him.